Hey, it's some old guy quoting again today. And hey, what the heck is this? Uh, this is a parametric slew drive uh, by, uh, let me get my paperwork in order here. This is by a uh, Bost Wickenator. And it was posted on February 13th, 2018. Um, it's a stepper motor, worm gear driven whirly gig with these little plastic uh, um, BBs in it. Uh, as, as kind of bearings, as little balls to keep it moving. So <clears throat> I was thinking that this might generate some torque and I've got an application where I need a bit of torque. So um, I was going to take a look at this one. Now I printed his, this is parametric so you can download the open SCAD and there's all sorts of parameters you can adjust in there. Uh, some of them take a little tweaking as uh, in some experimentation. Uh, that was my experience. Um, so what I did is I just took his standard um, copy with the standard uh, STL files that had a 100 millimeter inner ring and printed those. But I, I didn't print them directly. I modified them just a little bit here just because here's, here's a look at this part here. And I'll put this on the screen too for, uh, electronically because it's, it's probably better. These things, um, let me get the right part here. <coughs> okay, so this thing... Um, has this little bracket on the bottom here um, to uh, hold the stepper motor. But, so I couldn't figure out how to print it because it sticks out the back. Uh, you can't print it like this because it's got a funny edge and you got the ring. I didn't want to print it like that, which would be the, about the best way to print it because then you have a lot of infill in here to have to clean out and these wouldn't be very smooth. So what I did is, um, <clears throat> and here's the other half, what I did was I just sliced that part off and made it a separate part here. So these guys will uh, um, bolt on to the two halves here. Um, and then uh, will bolt on to a stepper motor. So that's that's the best solution I could find. I did have some support material through here and here that I couldn't eliminate. I didn't want to, you know, it was fine. Um, but these are nice and heavy duty. I printed them uh, rather heavy with four shells. And then there is a uh, the worm drive that goes in there too, and it prints uh, vertically like that. And it's got some support material down here. It looks like this one didn't print very cleanly for me. I had another one that uh, looked pretty good. I'm just going to break in here and show you a quick note on printing this uh, worm gear. When you import it, it comes in like this, but uh, I prefer to uh, flip it 180 degrees the other way. We'll see center and arrange. There we go. And um, of course, you can see here that we're going to need some supports. But if you just turn on supports, it's, it might start adding supports between the uh, threads here, which you really don't want. It's really going to mess things up. So, oh, at least on uh, um, Simplify 3D here, they have the option up here to go ahead and add. Uh, uh, supports in a couple of different ways. You can build from the platform only. Hopefully uh, other slicers have that feature too. So we're going to build the automatic supports and it just does the supports on the one level there and not between the threads. And the threads have printed perfectly for me so I've not had an issue with that. You might be able to get by with not doing the supports at all but uh, you might have a bit more cleanup too. But I had to clean up anyway so in any case uh, there you go. I just wanted to point that out. So I figured I'd print this one and uh, see how well it fits and see what we can do with it. If it's worthwhile going to a, a printing, uh, <clears throat> uh, if it's worthwhile customizing it and printing it. Now that one's not going to fit in there for me. I'm going to have to uh, sand down this surface right here a little bit to get it to get it to fit. You can see that came up pretty crappy on that end, but I think it's going to work for me. I had a better one that I had worked on for a while, but of course it's wandered off on me, probably a cat toy now. And it's just the way it happens, <clears throat> especially around here. So I'm going to clean this guy up and see if we can get that guy to go in there smoothly. And uh, it's just, it says a NEMA 17, but that hole just looks too small for me. But see what we can find. I'll be back in a minute. 
So I whittled this down with a pair of uh, side cutters here just to get some of the crud off the off the top there and, and on the top there. And I've got it now that it uh, rolls pretty good in there. So, however, I went to check that it would fit on a uh, stepper motor. Now this one still has the old Axeman surplus uh, price on the back. And that one will just almost go in there. But here's a NEMA 17, 17 HS19. And that one just not even close. So I grabbed the uh, caliper here and I wanted to measure the, uh, it doesn't have quite as much of a flat, but uh, that one is uh, 5.0, if you're not on the flat. And this one, more like 4.8 or a 9. So I think I think I need to make this hole just a little bit bigger on the end here uh, to accommodate the stepper motor I want to use. All right, so I made some adjustments on this, and I got it so that uh, the shaft of a uh, um, regular stepper motor would fit in there. Probably just a little bit too loose, but um, I also created one that would fit on the six millimeter shaft of uh, this guy, planetary gear system on there, but. Uh, this is making the material kind of thin, so I'm a little worried about it. So we'll see how this actually works. So this guy fits in here, of course, and then you have these um, airsoft BBs. I don't know, they're plastic. They're very smooth, they're pretty cool stuff, and we're going to use those as uh, the um, little balls inside here. They fit nicely into this little track doesn't specify how many you need to go in there. I don't know if you can overpack them, but uh, we'll find out. And I think that's probably sufficient again. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and close this up. I'm going to get that guy out of there. And then we'll use some uh, five millimeter um, screws to go ahead and close this guy up. I'm just going to pop three on for now. You have to be careful because there is a, a hole here. Let's see if I can find it. A hole right here that actually goes to the uh, <clears throat> warm gear inside, so certainly don't close that one up. And these are 20 millimeters long. You probably can get by with a 25. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and pop this on like that. It looks like that's on there. And of course there's room for screws to fit into the stepper motor now. So let's go ahead and do that. This may be just a bust after this whole thing. We'll find out. So I need to use a little bit of a longer screw. Those are a little bit thicker there. It's probably a 10 millimeter long M3. And I think the circle in which that little uh, front section fits into is a little bit too small, so I'll go ahead and remodel that. <clears throat> but hopefully we'll be able to give her a try here and just see if it functions at all. Alright, we've got to connect it up to a ramps card here. Off the uh, mostly printed CNC machine that I just assembled here recently. And uh, that should be plugged into the nothing. <laughs> Stop plugging it at all. Oh. All right, find the end of the cord the tangle here. Get rid of that. Make sure that's sealed. I probably should put those away. See, I've got this connected up to the uh, one with the planetary gearbox, which is the one I'd like to use. All right, we're in the Y connector. Let me get rid of these little spheres here. And get those off the desk so I don't make a mess with them. 
here we are. Let's see if anything happens or if it just jitters. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move the Y axis and cross your fingers. Go slowly. Ain't turning. <laughs> it ain't turning. So let's see if we, can, if we loosen this thing up over the um, over the drive shaft here. If things will improve. Oh yes, it's turning now. Look at that. Doesn't sound too healthy. Probably needs a little lube in there. Probably what it needs. Uh oh. Now it's stuck. So I've got this lovely, lovely wheel bearing grease that uh, God knows I've had around for probably 30 years. You can see how much I've used. I, this probably isn't the best, uh, you know, <laughs> use of this material. Yeah, it might be better, better to have some white lithium grease or something like that. But this is what I got on hand. So I'm going to just lay some down there in the tracks. It should... Uh, it should work its way around eventually. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, put a bunch right on there. Down the shaft this way and up. <gasps> uh oh. You didn't see that. I'll put some down over there. There. Alright, let's see if that helps or if all we did was make a mess. Oh, that's running so much smoother now. Look at that. Let's go by 10 millimeters. Oh yes, look at that. Isn't that nice? a little grinding in there but I think that's gonna settle down as the parts wear. Can we go the other way? Yeah. How much torque can that? Oh boy I can't stop it. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh man I can't stop that. Oh there I did. So uh, takes quite a bit to stop it. At least the gear doesn't strip in the process. At least not yet. I'm applying quite a bit of pressure in there and it's not stopping the motor. That's pretty amazing. Thumbs up. Nice design. So when you download this file uh, or this uh, this project from Thingiverse, uh, you get the default 100 millimeter uh, sized uh, ring setup that he had provided as STL files, but you also get this slew drive uh, F3D, which is a uh, parameterized uh, project in Fusion 360. So here's uh, the project, and you can actually go in and modify a lot of these values. <coughs> going to change parameters and we'll move this to the side a little bit. For instance if you want a little bit uh, heftier shaft diameter you can change that to maybe uh, uh, 10. Um, you can also define the uh, shaft of the stepper motor uh, that you're going to use. It'll take a minute to update here. All right, so you see that shaft got uh, much thicker and it made room in the body for that. And if you want to, you can go down here and adjust the adjust the stepper uh, size here, stepper lip. Um, shaft diameter would be right here. So the default that I printed seemed a little tight. So you know, a, a six millimeter might be good for a standard uh, um, stepper motor. Uh, you can certainly experiment with that. Uh, you can modify everything from uh, the well. The, the obvious thing you'd probably want to uh, change once this comes up is uh, the diameter of the inner ring. 
So that would be, uh, I believe that would be gear diameter. He's got it set to 100. Let's set it to 120 and see what happens. Okay. And there we go. It seems like that worked just fine. Um, you can even change the uh, size of the bearings in the raceway. So that's very cool. Neat stuff. Amazing. Uh, some some changes it seems like uh, if you make them you need to tweak things a little bit. Uh, for instance, if uh, you take the uh, thread diameter here, let's see if that works. I know I was playing with this uh, earlier and it seemed like uh, there were some things that you just had to tweak a little bit somehow. As you can see here now we changed that diameter of the threads and for some reason the gear is no longer meshing here. And in fact the threads have uh, disappeared on this gear so I I'm not sure what happens there. Um, you know, certainly would uh, require a bit of digging to figure that out. But anyway, um, there you have it. Uh, we downloaded the default files, made a few modifications and it definitely works. Very cool design. Thanks for sharing this one. Hey, if you're still here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you get reminders when my new videos come out. And if you're really enjoying my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could help out with, by supporting me at my Patreon campaign. I'll put the link below in the uh, description. Thanks for watching.